Alright, so if you're thinking about an AVL warping wheel, here's mine. Um, I really like using it. It was a lot easier to start beaming my warp with this and measuring it's really fast, especially because you can just stand in one place. You're right there next to the handle, spinning it in circles. Um, and it doesn't make me dizzy the way that my mill would sometimes, like having to follow it up and down with my eyes. So I'm really happy with it. I'm glad I got one. As ridiculously expensive as it is, I think it was totally worth it. Um, the biggest thing I had to learn when I started is how to think about what I was measuring and how it would translate to the loom because when you take the comb off, you turn it <clears throat> and put it here in the holder and then it'll go onto the loom and I'll take a video of that after I have a section measured. But as far as your color orientation goes, as you're measuring, you start, this is going to be the far left of your loom and then go right when you're looking at the back of the loom. So I had to think about that because I, I did one backwards once and ended up having to like flip it and take it off the loom and put it back on to get the orientation right. So this is an eight dent mini reed. So it has eight dents per inch. And so I do 16 dents at a time because I do two inches. I have it measured off so that I can do four at a time. Um, but I didn't really like it as much trying to get both of them beamed together. I might do four at a time with this because I'm doing mostly um, solid warp and that might be easier. And then you only have to beam half as much if you beam it twice as wide. And I left a little gap because my loom has wooden pegs for my sectional beam. But you start here. Um, you can see I've already measured two ends and they go around the cone, all six of them, all six cones, and you can adjust it in and out to make it different circumferences. I usually keep it at three yards per revolution, but because I'm doing a shorter warp and want to make the most out of some yarn I have, I'm going to do it so that my total length is like five yards and four inches because with three on the inside and three on the outside, it is two yards and 20 inches, I think the chart said. AVL has that listed and it comes in the package with the wheel as well. But it's really easy to adjust the cone, um, the spools in and out because you just use this wing nut and get it off of the bolt and then move it up to here. So you can see it's kind of greasy where I usually have it. Um, so when you're getting ready to start measuring an end, um, you bring the yarn up. I have my fancy little cone rack my husband made me. Um, you bring it up from the right over to the left and you hook it under here and it's pretty tight under the clip for the first little while. When I start to get to the end of my section, I have to wind it around the clip a couple times and not just um, put it underneath the clip one time because then it starts to slip. So this is one set measured. I'm going to do the two revolutions. Every time I measure an end, I'm going to rotate the wheel two times. So you can see there is a revolution counter right here, but a lot of times I go too far and end up having to go back and backtrack. So I don't pay attention to the numbers. I mostly listen to the way that it clicks as I'm measuring. And then after I've measured an end, I usually go back and double check the numbers. So, or well, I count here instead of looking at the yardage or the revolution counter because that way I know how many times it's gone around here. And a lot of times I'm doing, like I can fit 33 yards if I cram it of eight two at 24 ends per inch. So I'm having to count 11 revolutions of three yards each to make sure that my ends are as long as I want. Um, that's the biggest way you can mess up with length is if you have like one end that you only did 10 revolutions of the wheel and you are supposed to do 11, so then that's gonna be three yards shorter and you'll have to tie on new ends when you get there or 
measure new ones out however you want to deal with that. But um, let me show you how this spins. It's going to be kind of weird because I usually have one hand on the handle, which is handy because um, it spins by itself. It's just on a um, on a bolt, and so like as I turn, I don't have to move my hand. It's pretty ergonomic. You can also adjust the height of this on here. And like these holes are where you can make the wheel go up and down. So if you really want to sit in a chair while you're warping, you could. I usually stand up. So it's going around the top and down over here. I usually like my cones to be directly underneath this outside spool because <clears throat> I don't get it caught up. Sometimes it feels like it's... Um, can get tangled or like pulled it's better if it's just coming straight up off of where you have your cones sitting so I would be holding the handle at the same time if I wasn't holding my phone um, so I try usually I just do two at a time or even one at a time because um, I get tangles if I do more than that um, I've tried using a cooling rack like from my kitchen to thread the yarn through and it ends up being kind of a pain. So it ends up fastest for me to either do one or two cones at a time when I'm measuring as opposed to trying to do three or four or five because I usually end up having to stop and kind of untangle. So if I cared enough, I might try to figure something out like a warping paddle or something, but I don't. Um, so I've gone around one time and you can see on the spool, not that it wants to focus, that I have one coming up from the clip to there. And so you don't count that one because that's not a whole revolution. So the first revolution is this right here. So I've gone around one time and you heard the click when I completed one. So I'm gonna do it for the second time. And it'll click, so I know that's there. I'm going to be doing four and then five ends per dent so I will end up with four here and then you go down and around the clip and then up this angle and you want them all to be the same because when you get to the end you're gonna end up cutting here so you want them to all be coming down from the mini rattle reed thing and then down and around here and then over the top so that they're all forming an, like the X and that's where you're going to cut. So now I have um, a total of four ends measured and if I wanted to go back and count, which isn't as big of a deal because I'm only doing two revolutions each, you would see that I have one here and then one there, and then this one that's coming up and over would be part of the next one. So I made, you can count the two right there. I'm sorry if anyone's getting sick from watching. So um, I'm gonna keep measuring and I'll make another video of how I beam it on to the loom.